I really thought 2020 and 2021 quiet for movies since Gohan made an appearance. So in theory, this movie was an apology letter for most Z generations and Dragon Ball fans. With that out of the way, I'm Zack Savage, and this week I'm reviewing the kick-ass action movie, Dragon Ball Super Superheroes. Dragon Ball is one of the few franchises you think when you hear of anime. It has gained a cult following with Hot Topic merchandise, video games, and even theatrical releases, but not better than the movie we are reviewing today. It went on in many different series such as Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Z Kai, and Dragon Ball Super, and sold nearly 160 million manga in Japan and 300 million worldwide. It's no wonder why this intense action and suspense series is one of pop culture's greatest all stars. Now this franchise has received its own movie, Dragon Ball Super Superheroes. So is it any good? Let's find out. The movie begins with a backstory that an evil Magenta and the Red Ribbon organization hired a young but evil henchman named Dr. Hito who insists on joining the Red Ribbon organization for Oreos. Really? Oreos? That's like if the weird business guy from Slam Dunk Ernest persuades Ernest to join a basketball team for Guy's Potato Chips. I mean, really. Back on Piccolo's home planet, Piccolo is introduced to the Red Ribbon soldier Gamma. Gamma abducts Gohan's daughter and sets up a ra ransom to Lord Gohan. The kidnapping fails, but Hito releases the monster Cell Max to destroy the world. But the Great Manika prevents that from happening. Everything is saved and Hito reforms is now working amongst the good guys. I loved it. It was a break from the worst movie I've ever seen in 2020 to 2021. The story was creative and I loved the climax. The animation was great too. However, my only complaint is why Goku is absent one half in the movie. Goku is when where the adventures of the story grows and seeing him during the beginning instead of Piccolo would have drawn more attention to some people and developed the infrastructure better. Same thing with Lord Beerus and Brawly. Other than the, that, the writing was spotless. I especially like how Gamma makes the plot come together. The character development from evil to good was not what I was expecting it to the very end. Dr. Hito was alright, but it was pretty predictable that he was going to turn good near the end of the movie. Even Vegeta was rarely seen. It was mostly Piccolo and Gamma. The climax was outstanding and seeing the team come together for about 4 years made me pleased with how the series is getting more thrilling than ever. I especially loved the fight midway in the movie where Goku and Vegeta get on with it together. So basically I'm saying that I wish there was more use of the characters in the movie than the other two forgotten ones. The CGI contrasts and the overlaid animation match the integrity of how cartoons were animated beforehand. This makes the interface of CGI helpful, like when Gohan and Vegeta battle it on, or when the final climax makes it shine and prosper. One scene I found hilarious is when Bulma uses the Dragon Balls for her butt lift and water eyes. Other than the use of characters, I've seen no other problem with this movie. It's very lengthy too and has a lot of nostalgic elements for Dragon Ball fans, making this the be best Dragon Ball movie ever made. In conclusion, Dragon Ball Super Heroes is a masterpiece, a pop cultural comeback for anyone who's seen Dragon Ball. There may have been one I didn't like, but the action and suspense made up for it. In theory, Dragon Ball Super is the number one movie this year, and for a good reason. The fact that it uses new characters and dramatic climax makes it worth watching a movie. If you want to see the full movie for yourself, I have the link to it in the description. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more. It's over nine. Ten.